Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for watching today. Today is, excuse me, Tuesday, December 27th, and Mike Ferrante is uh, out of town, and I am taking over for this class today. And we're uploading this to YouTube because we started doing our Zoom earlier today, and uh, but the power went off in the building, <laughs> in our office building. And so, I'm recording this and uploading this to YouTube. So without uh, taking up too much of your time and jump right into today's topic, which is always a good topic, is about time blocking and prospecting and things to think about. So we're going to jump right into today is uh, a 30-day plan in time blocking yourself. Now, I've been coaching agents for decades now. <laughs> I started my office way back in 1998. Eesh, it's going on uh, 25 years. It'll be next year, which is just a few days. And time blocking and making yourself accountable is always one of the most important and the one of the most things that agents don't do. One of the most important things they overlook. They just don't put it in their schedule. They don't block their time. They don't tell themselves what they have to do when they have to do it. Uh, just like treating yourself like an employee. They don't treat themselves like employee, like giving yourself tasks to do. So that's one of the things before I jump into it, some things to think about when I'm going over these things. Don't think of yourself as remembering to do these things. They should be visual like in your calendar from this time to this time to this time to this time, I should do this, I should do that and pretend like there's no nothing incoming to you because some most agents that are not at the level they want to be are, they're passively reacting to things all day. That's it. All they do is react to calls coming in, uh, um, transactions they're working on, thinking of things that keep themselves busy, but not really keeping themselves accountable. So I'm going to jump right into this, some time blocking ideas. So what do we do? We, next, we talk to people. So basically, we talk to people. We have to talk to people. This is a contact sport. So look over your past business the last year, two years, and really dive deep into it and see, well, first, every single sale you've ever had and will ever have, you should know where they came from, what lead source, what contact, where was their referral, was it a passive referral, or active referral? My, my example of what a packed, passive referral is, someone just remembered you told you you got a call so if you ever got a call like hi this is joe uh one of your past clients or a friend of yours or someone in your uh, family referred me to call you and gave me your number that's a passive referral that's good but even better those active referrals where you're calling people first before they call you if any if anybody's example and i'm sorry i'm going off on a tangent here but if you have say 10 deals a year that are passive, that just people called you because someone in your database, sphere of influence, referred you and gave them your number and you never talked to them. If you have that going for you and you're doing that well, where you're connecting with people that well, that they're referring business to you without you asking for their names and numbers first, you could triple that by just being more, active and in, in talking to people and asking for referrals and asking for names of people to build in your database so they're in your database already so a lot of times there's successful agents out there numbers wise because they do such a good job of building connections with people but they don't ask for the referrals directly they're just telling reminding them to tell people so that's a whole nother topic we'll go over another day <laughs> but just wanted to remind you of that so <clears throat> so what is time blocking? What is the ideal day? What's the ideal week? What's the ideal month? So we're going to go over some sample time blocking. And here's an example. So here's an example of things 
that you can do throughout the day from the time you go up to the time you go to the gym, the time you eat lunch, time you shower, the time you go to bed. This is a, a good example of a specific time block and being very proactive about what you want to do with your time. This is a great time. And the great thing about a lot of agents, when I go over this with them, is like, this is unrealistic. I, I say this, what I do with my time blocking, I um, when I make calls to people <clears throat> and I have incoming calls and appointments to talk to agents, new agents, agents working on transactions, things like that, I always leave myself five, 10 minutes in uh, an hour or every, usually maybe five, 10 minutes, every half hour. So I keep my appointments to about 15, 20 minutes, gives me a 10 minute gap before my next half hour appointment or 20 minute appointment. So I could call people back. So I tell you just, you can do something like this with, I would say 20 minute increments or 25 minute increments with a five minute, 10 minute catch up call. I refer to it in my books, a catch up call. So when agents are calling me or things are things that I have to respond to, react to, when you're an active agent, you don't know you have to react to things. Uh, you know, someone calling you, a, a buyer that has a pending transaction, a seller that has something going on, another agent needs your help on a transaction, title companies needing something, all of that. You... Uh, if you have enough time or in the day to just pick up the phone, anytime it rings for you, you're not booking enough time. You're not time blocking. Like I tell all my agents and I, do, and I use technology for this. Even while I'm on this right now, I have agents calling me. I hit a button. If I am I'm looking at it, say, I will call you back later, but they know I acknowledged it. And then I might, like right after this, I have a few phone calls. I'll text back those agents that need things and let them know that I'll, what time I will call them back because I have those blocks, you know, those open five, 10 minute blocks. Usually I try to keep 10 minutes every half hour so I can have two calls. So the whole point of my me explaining this in this time block, some agents say, I don't want to fill out my schedule because when am I going to have time for things that come in? Now, I could see in the schedule too, with Mike's example of prospecting of when you're going to be proactive and make calls. When you're going to reach out to like example, if you want to update your buyers and sellers on their current uh, sales that are going on, when are you going to do that? You book that. Anything going out that you are in control of should be in your time block because you could schedule it. You could, you could plan it. Example, if I have, uh, uh, as an agent, say at the end of the day, I was going to update all my buyers and sellers of their current contracts and say a buyer calls you or seller calls you at two o'clock, but you're booked till on calls. You could at least, you could spend the 15, 20 seconds to text that buyer or seller back. Hey, saw your call. Don't worry. I'm, I will be following you up with this evening, later in the evening, if that's fine. And it takes the technology today can help you stay on track, on track of your, your schedule. So if you don't block your time, you're not going to ever do everything you want to do within a day. Well, if you do get everything done within a day, I always say, my opinion is, if you go at the end of the day, go, I got everything done. You didn't give yourself enough things to do, <laughs> if that makes sense. You didn't get, you, you just barely, and if you got to the end of the day and you're like, oh, that was an easy day, you got to make it harder for yourself. You got to put more work on the plate for you. If you want, again, this is a numbers game. This is a time, calls, contact game of sales. If you get to the end of the day and you're not tired, you you can still have a pretty good day, but you could could have done better. You you could, could have made more phone calls. Do I, am I am I saying kill yourself every day on the phone and kind of no? You should book enough time, or if you're starting this project, do it book enough where you're not going to quit. So you do it enough. You start slow. 
like, you know, you want to run a marathon, you're going to start slow, you're going to start with, you know, a couple phone calls, a couple time blocks, a couple this, you want to, you know, you want to keep yourself busy every second of the day with no breaks. So what are you going to do? But if you do make it too hard for yourself, when you're starting off, you're not going to do it. It's kind of like we're getting into the first of the year. How many times I personally hate the beginning of the year, especially going to the gym. I go to the gym several times a week, usually five to six times a week, you know, unless I'm out of town or, you know, really busy, but mostly I try to hit five to six times a week at the gym. I hate going to the gym at the beginning of the year because all the newbies, all the people that are, have the new resolutions and can't wait till February or March when they, most of them fall off <laughs> and it makes more room for me. Sorry, I'm not saying this. I don't want them to hit their goals, but what happens? They join New Year's resolutions, brand new. They've never done it before and it, it becomes too hard and they don't continue on with it. Uh, so that just gives you an example. Prospecting time, some ideas of who you're going to be called, people you know. When you're prospecting and you're in, in your time block, you're going to be calling people you know, people you don't know. How many calls should you make? So that's really up for, to you. Up, it's again not to keep on using this analogy, but if you want you know, you want to exercise more, where are you at? Me personally, I'm not a runner. I've said this many times in my video. Sorry, I keep on saying it. If you've heard any of my other videos, <laughs> I'm not a runner. You tell me today, you know, at 52 years old, start running, run two miles, three miles. I might be able to get through, you know, a light jog of two or three miles, but I'll probably be with physical hurting the next day. <laughs> or if someone wants to, you know, never run before, I know I can't run five miles today. And obviously if my life depended on it, I probably can. Uh, I do a lot of elliptical and walking, but my I just hate running. So I never do it. So I try other things to do it. Same with this. How many calls are you going to make? How many calls are you going to make where it feels comfortable to you? Uh, you know, you can handle five calls a day without feeling, oh, uh, can you do 10 calls a day? Can you do 20? Obviously, 100, most people aren't going to do 100. Most people aren't going to do 50. But where are you comfortable fitting it in your schedule and time blocking it where you're going to continue doing it? And that's why I met, we mentioned people you know or people you don't know. Most agents rather call people that they know or have a connection with. So find out, you know, you have to do this when building your database of all the people, you know, people that know your name, that have a connection with you, you know, it's someone from your, they never talked to you before, but there's the, they're in uh, your church, uh, their membership at your church or your uh, club that you go to or where you volunteer or your your kid's school or whatever you're involved with a community wise that they would know your name or at least to connect to. So I say people, you know, slash people you could connect to like, Hey, I'm Tony Geraci, essential to and home star. Remember your, your son and my son played, uh, you know, soccer together last year, you know, some kind of, I'm just throwing out a, right off top of it, some type of connection where people connect you. And then the people that you don't know that can, can't connect you from anywhere. Those are more cold calls. Some agents really have a problem and or have the fear of calling those people. But I promise you, if you're an active person that's been around in life and had other jobs and been, you know, went to school or college, you're going to find, you have kids, you have family, you have done things in your life, you're going to find so many things and ways to contact people that are connection, even in your own city, your own street, your own community. There's people, how many people would know your name? If you said to connect to everybody you went to high school with, everybody you went to, you know, no, no, not everybody you went to college with is a little different, but everybody you went to high school with, everybody you went to grade school with, everybody you went, you know, the camp with, everybody, anybody that can know your name. Um, 30 day plan, it's things to think about total appointments that you want to make in 30 days, buyer appointments and seller appointments. So, total appointments. Now, appointments to me, so your goal when making your prospecting calls is to book an appointment. Appointment doesn't have to be face-to-face. -to, -face. to me, I'm a little bit lenient. It doesn't mean book an appointment 
uh, 100% with someone that's buying or selling today. But booking appointment, your job, your goal when making the prospecting calls is to find a time, not during your prospecting calls. This is a big difference. Your prospecting calls is just to you make a connection, leave a message, or when you make the connection, say someone picks up the phone now, his name is Joe, say, hi, Joe, you know, you know, it's Tony Geraci, I've ever been following up with you the last few years, just wanted to see if you wanted to book some time to go over in detail your needs and wants of what, you, what you're looking for when you buy or sell a home in the near future or in the future, or whenever you're thinking about. So booking appointment, not at that time, because you might catch them at work, you might catch them driving, you need to get continue making your calls. You can't take half hour on one call. Is a book time with them to really go over their needs and wants. Now, if they say, hey, Tony, yeah, you caught me at the right time. I'm thinking about buying in the next couple of weeks or months. Then you take the time. <laughs> then you're like, don't let that one go. Just don't let time will kill that one. Just get them on the, take the time. If they have time to talk, yes, take the time. Don't worry about it. If they're saying, no, I'm not thinking about buying or selling today, uh, but probably five or six years from now, maybe, you know, I'm thinking about downsizing or upsizing or moving to a different side of town, whatever. Then that's book an appointment time. Now you got to, now you're going to have to, and it takes time to do this, is to figure out how to connect with people, say hello, give them a little one-on-one uh, -on -one time on the phone when you got them on the phone, but be able to move on to the next call. Because some people, which are great people, friends, relatives, people, you know, then they need to play catch up which is great sometimes, but you're playing, let's go down memory lane. And next, you know, an hour of your time, you made one phone call because you called that friend from college they haven't talked to in a long time. So remember, you have time. You have things to do. You're booking your time. So you have to have work on and practice and doing this will help how to let people know that when you're calling them, hey, you have other appointments, you just want to say hi, and I was calling you in between appointments, I want to know what's going on. Quick calls and say, hey, I got another appointment, you got to be able to get on the phone, but you should have personal time, you have personal time. Hey, tonight I'm available at eight o'clock, would love to call you back and catch up more, is that good or tomorrow? Put them in your personal time category for those people. So I could go on and on about uh, different ways to do things. and. Um, and this is more one-on-one. -on -one. So let me kind of go through some more slides. So homework for today. And I know this was kind of brief because I wanted to make this video, make sure it got up on Mike's YouTube page. But homework is completing a 30-day time block plan. It start one day at a time. Start with some type of boilerplate of how your day should be put together. Have you had, uh, think about this, have you had other jobs that you had to, you had things to do? You walked into that job, you did, you know, even as a kid, you know, like I'll give you an example, you, you ever worked at a, like a, a sub shop or pizza shop when you were a kid and you walked in there, they had things that you do. Okay, you got to prep the line. You got to make sure the food's ready. You got to make sure I'm throwing out pizza because I'm Italian. I have many friends and family that have pizza places and worked many of them when I was a kid, you know, <laughs> getting the uh, make sure the pizza line is ready to go. The oven's on. Uh, there's there's a whole list of steps. And then when a, a call came in, when 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 were you open up for business for calls to come in? And when did you take a break? You know, when did you eat your lunch or dinner? You can't just pick it up whenever. When did you uh when did you end? And what was the um end at the end of the day? The things you had to do to clean up and get ready for the next day. So similar to some similar to that, you have to have that type of boilerplate things per day of what you're going to do each day and what time, what time you're going to be this and what time you're going to update your notes and what time are you going to start making your calls and what time are you going to be picking up the phone. And so if you ever had any jobs, think about those because almost every type of job that you probably ever had had some type of, if someone's paying you for their time, for you, they said they're making sure 
that you have things. If you work in a store, making sure the inventory, make sure the stores open, the doors are open, the open signs on, the phones are ringing, it's off, you know, the nighttime voicemail, whatever. There's a system in place because usually when someone's paying you, they want to make sure you're efficient and you're doing what you need to do. And they're going to give you a checklist and a time block yourself. But when you get into real estate and you're your own boss, there's no boss that's going to tell you exactly what you have to do every day. So you have to be that boss. You have to be that one that time blocks yourself and what you want to accomplish each day. And it's honestly, it's not that hard. It's it's kind of, you have, but it's got to be visual. You got to even do it on a spreadsheet. You got to do it on your phone. I live and breathe by my uh, iPhone calendar because it syncs to all my other devices. I have my assistant, Brooke, who's connected to my calendar so she can make changes to my calendar notes anytime uh, she needs to. So you have to do the same thing. If you ever get to the point of building a team, if you ever get to the point of you need an assistant, you need a, a system for your schedule to help you and organize yourself. So, you, so that's something to think about, not to go too off tangent. That's something to think about in the future. It's like, how am I going to time block myself when you let yourself know? Uh, other people know when you have an assistant or someone working for you. And get to that point. They got to know what when you're available, so they could get a hold of you, or or when they're booking appointments for you, or people need help and they're you know, they're making calls for you to check up on your transactions, like a transaction coordinator. You got to have this thing. You can't just wing it every day. And even if you are a brand new agent that has no business going on right now, no buyers, no sellers, you're just just starting up. You still can do this. You still have to time block. You can still fit it in. The great news about that is you could you have the whole day to fill in the times and with more prospecting. If you have another job and you can't do anything at that other job to jump into real estate, that's one big time block. Nine to five, you're stuck at that other job. You can't do anything. Five o'clock, your real estate life begins. Five to 10 p.m. What are you doing? You got five hours to work in real estate. I mean, when I have when I tell agents that, and may, many of you might have heard this me say this before. I have some agents that have other jobs; they're brand new. They go, "Oh, yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm I have a you know got a long day. It's like 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Like, oh, you're out at three. Oh, you have a whole work day ahead of you. Like, what? Yeah, just you have just 3 p.m. So 10 p.m., you had a seven-hour work day. You, you could get off that other job. You have seven more hours to work. The people that want to work, you know, two complete kind of shifts. <laughs> and that's what a lot of successful agents do. I have some very, very successful agents that have complete full-time, eight hours a day job. And they, do, they kill it in real estate because they, have, they get out at two or three and they have the whole late afternoon, early evening and evening to work real estate. They're not at a, you know, they're very little disadvantage other than them being tired working, you know, possibly 15 hours a day. But um, I'm telling you, it, 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 I love that kind of scenario when an agent has financial security with a full-time job and starting real estate and gets out early, like at two or three o'clock from wherever their job they're doing. And they don't have to worry about that job until they go back the next day. It's the best scenario you can be in. So got to win, went off the topic there. So, so uh, that's it for today. I appreciate you, you watching. I appreciate you uh, supporting Mike and I in our uh, videos that we do every Tuesday. And uh, I think Mike will be back on track for next Tuesday. So you'll be able to watch both of us. So sorry about the technical difficulty today for all the ones that were logged into our Zoom. And then after about 10 minutes, I, I clicked off. <laughs> so, all right. Have a great day and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.